Okay, hello everyone. All right, so I hope you're all doing well. <laughs> all right, so the next program is going to be a redo of the, the 18th question in the chapter two, Programming Challenges in Java. All right, so the original program I did was implemented using the scanner class. Now, the, so someone requested for this actually. So the person who requested for it wanted, wanted it implemented using the Goption Paint class this time around. So that's what that's what I'm going to do. Um, so this is the original question here, implemented using this kind of class. I'm going to go ahead and close it, and I'm going to implement this one using the um, J option pane class. All right. So let's just start. Um, let's just read the question so that we have, I, I have an idea. For the most part, I know what the question is asking though. All right. So write a program that plays a word game with the user. The program should ask the user to enter the following: his or her name, his or her age. Basically, these details. We're going to ask the user to enter these details. After the user has entered those items, the program should display the following story, inserting the user's input into the appropriate locations. There once was a person named Name who lived in, in city. In city. <laughs> at the age of age, Name went to college at college. So basically, we are accepting inputs from the user and we are replacing these placeholders with the values we accept here from the user. Okay. So let's start. I'm going to go ahead and create the class. Okay, so public class, and I'm going to call this Word Game Two. Okay, because this is the second version of the same program, of the of the original program, Word Game. All right, so I'll create the main method next. So public static void main. Okay. All right, so the program says write a, or the question says write a program that plays a word game with the user. Okay? The program should ask the user to enter the following. So since we are going to be asking the user to enter something or enter input, we have to use one of Java's features for accepting uh, input, right? And and we already know we're going to use use the pane class for this one. So to use the Gaussian pane class, we have to go ahead and import it. All right? So I'm going to do that by typing import javax.util the j option pane all right so basically from the java api i'm importing the j option pane class located in the javax.util package all right now with the j option pane class we don't have to go ahead and declare an object we can just go ahead and use it and use a class use the methods in the class to accept inputs from the user so the question says we should ask the user to enter the following the first thing we're going to ask the user is his or her name. All right, so I'm going to use the option panes show inputs dialog to to display a message to the user and allow the user to type in a response. So I'm going to type in J option pane dot show input dialog. And the J option pane dot show input dialog uh, accepts in a couple of arguments, right? So the first argument, or basically, it's, or basically, I'm going to type in one argument, and this argument I'm going to type is going to be the message that's going to be displayed on the dialog box. So I'm going to ask the user, or tell the user, please enter your name, or please type your name, or uh, basically, what's your name? Um, or, or, or simply, just <laughs> please type in your name. Please type in your name. All right, so. Now this is going to pop up a, a dialog box, right? And it's going to um, display this message to the user and allow the user to type in a response. Now what the user is going to type in a response, right? But whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string. That's how the ch um, show input dialog works by default. Whatever the user types, even if it's a number, whatever the, whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string, right? But when it's being returned, we need a place to store it, right? Since it's a string, we need to declare a string variable that can store it. So I'm going to come up here and declare a string variable. I'm going to call it username. And whatever is being returned is going to be stored in username. I'm going to store it in username this way. All right, so now that's the first input or item or the first thing that I have accepted from the user. Okay, now the question says that um, his or her age. Same idea. Okay, same idea. I'm just going to go ahead and copy the same line paste it, change a few things. So the first thing I want to uh, change, let me just align this properly. The first thing I want to change is please type in your age. 
and instead of username I'm going to declare a variable but the age is going to be well let's let's think about it for a second uh, since we're going to display this as uh, at the end right since we're going to display it, display this as a string at the end we we're, we're not going to be doing any any mathematical ex expressions with a, with a age so we don't have to really convert it to a number okay we can we can keep it as a string because everything that the showing input dialog returns is a, is, a, is a string by default so let's not worry about converting it to an integer or anything Let, let's just keep it as a string because we're going to end up just displaying it right and everything that has to be displayed it has to be in a string has to be a string right okay so let's just keep it as a string so string h except that you know we, we're going to end up having so many strings declared if we are having if we have multiple strings okay if we are declaring multiple variables of the same type we don't have to say string username string age we can just say string username comma age since they are the same type we can do something like this we are it's this, this is the same as saying string username semicolon string age semicolon it's because they are the same type we don't have to say string again so we can just do string username age basically I'm declaring two variables of the same type string all right, and then now I can let's let's change this to user age, and then now I can store the age in user age here. Okay. All right, and the next thing is going to be the city. So it's basically going to be the same idea. Paste this line here. Declare another variable, call it uh, user city, and then user city here. So do the same thing. I'm going to actually paste this a couple of times. Um, so, all right. So the next thing is going to be the name of the college. So I'm going to say user college, which I haven't declared yet. So I'm going to come up here and declare it as user college. And then the next one is going to be the user profession, right? So I'm going to call this user profession, which I haven't declared yet. So I'm going to add it here as user profession. And then the type of animal. So I'm going to have another one here. Oops. And call this user user animal. Because it looks like that's the, that's the peasant's pet or so. So I'm going to declare it here above as user animal, and then the the last one actually. Wait, wait, that's that's not the person's uh, pet. That's actually a variable for the person's pet. So let's just say animal, all right? And then let's have the next one. I will change this to also to animal. And the next one is going to be user pet, right? User pet. All right, change this from uh, enter your name, age. Please enter your city. Enter your college. Enter your profession. Enter. Uh, please type in an animal. Um, I don't know name. Uh, I don't know. And then please type in your pet's name okay so now we are basically asking the user for these for these details right all right so after the user has entered these items the program should display the following story inserting the user's input into the appropriate locations so basically they're going to form a string this way all right so now we have the variables all we have to do is just display display the variables to, together with our other strings and form a, a nice story right and to, to basically display something using the Jobson pane, we can use the Jobson pane show show message dialog, and that's going to pop up a text bo uh, uh, a dialog box and with, with something displayed on it, right? So I'm going to call the Jobson pane that show message dialog, and that also takes in a couple of arguments. Okay, I'm going to type in null as the first argument, and null is basically going to center the window on the screen. And the second argument I'm, I'm going to specify here is basically what's going to be displayed on, on that dialog box. We don't have anything yet. We can go ahead and actually start typing. But then we're going to be using these variables mixed with other strings to form this, right? 
instead of actually typing the whole thing here, right, and concatenating it and all that stuff, let's do something else. Let's create a variable. I'm going to call it's also going to be a string, okay? I'm going to call it user output string. Or I'm just going to call it output string. I can call it user output string, I guess. I'm going to call it user output string. And the reason why I'm do doing this is because I want to basically form the entire string. Okay, I'm going to concatenate strings to this, to basically what's, or what's already going to be stored here. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to basically form a string in user output string. And when I'm done, I'll basically display user output string here. But then we need to basically form the string first, first, right? So initially, I'm going to set it equal to nothing, an empty string. Okay, I'm setting it to an empty string, and then we'll concatenate more strings to it to form that, that string. All right, so after I've accepted the inputs, before I display the output, I'm going to start forming a string. So I'm just, I'm just going to say user output string is going to be equal to what's already stored in user output string. Okay, so concatenated with, so I'm basically saying that Take what's already stored in user output string, which is nothing, and then concatenate it, concatenate it with something. When you do that, after you're done with that, store the result back in user output string. So in other words, we are forming a string. We are always we are adding to what's already stored in user output string. We are we are we are, we are doing that. All right. So what I'm going to do here is first of all, let's start with a message. There was once a person named. All right. So let's do that. It's going to be a string. I'm concatenating a string to what's already stored in user output string. There was, let's bring this up a little bit. All right, so there was, where, where is it? There was, uh, there once was a person named. Okay, now I can put a space here and then concatenate it with what's stored in username here. All right. And then I can continue with another string and say space who lived in city I know I know I need to go ahead and concatenate it with what's stored in user city here so I'm going to say user city and I'm going to concatenate it with something else so who lived in city I can I'm going to I'm going to concatenate it with a period because that's what that's what ends here and after the period I'm going to have a space since I'm going off the screen I'm going to break this in two lines I'm going to type in a plus I can just I can just hit enter here and continue so b before I break it on a, on a line I need to make make sure I can I join it with what's going to be what's going to come next on the next line right so uh, period I, I have a sp my space already and then I'm going to co form continue the string at the age of now I can go ahead and concatenate it with what's stored in age user age here so at the age of user age there's a comma here. And I'm going to concatenate it with a string, which is going to be a comma. Right? Name went to college at college, right? So name, which is what's what basically the value of username. Okay, what, what's already what's stored in username? Okay, what's stored in username? So name, which is username, right? I need to just close this a little bit. All right, so name went to college at college. So username, concatenate it with a string, went to college at college. But college we know it's stored in user college. So I'm going to use what's stored in user college. 